Hello, Investing Pots with you again. Um, I'm the current situation is kind of causing me to rethink what I'm doing. Um, you know, the option wheel, you're always uh, selling puts and calls, um, yet the options premiums are really bad right now since the implied volatility is, is so low. So here's the historical volatility of Walgreens or WBA over the last year. It's only been this low for a few days in the, in the entire last 12 months, and then it always, IV always pops up again. So this low IV environment is really making me doubt whether I should be selling covered calls. I'm just not being adequately uh, compensated for the risk. So here's an example uh, of a diagonal spread. So to, uh, to enter the trade, you buy a long option, in this case, uh, a couple of dollars in the money with about 50 days of expiration for $2.19. Then I sell an out of the money call expiring in 21 days for a 66 cents credit to uh, partially defray the cost of the uh, long option. The total cost of the spread is $1.51. The max profit is the width of the strikes, $3 minus the cost of $1.51 for a total max profit of $1.49. The max loss is simply the cost of the spread, or $1.51. So I implemented a Black-Scholes um, option uh, modeling spreadsheet that allows me to model the P&L of the diagonal spread for uh, various scenarios. Um, I have to enter manually enter the option prices and strikes and expirations um, in, in a more advanced platform. I assume Tasty Trade will, will model this kind of trade for you, but it's been helpful for me to kind of understand what's going on. So the main variable that control the price of an option are the uh, implied volatility and the price of stock. So in this very basic example, I hold the uh, IV of the long and short options constant, and I assume the stock price doesn't change. So this is a complicated graph and I'll, I'll explain it. So the long option price is green, while the short option price is uh, cyan. The main idea of a diagonal spread is that the uh, 20 days to expiration short option is gonna decay much faster than the 50 days to expiration long option. So the value of the diagonal spread at any time is the distance between the green and the cyan curves. If the stock price doesn't move, then the short option will decay to zero and the long option will still retain a lot of value when the short option expires, so you can sell the spread for a profit. Uh, the orange curve is the implied volatility of the short option, while the red line is the uh, implied volatility of the long option. In this sim simple example, I'm assuming that IV is not changing. Uh, the yellow curve is the change in stock price, which I'm also holding constant right now. So the blue profit curve uh, is computed by simply subtracting the price of the long option minus the price of the short option. So in this case, at expiration, it's a 32 cent profit. It's almost impossible that IV would decline from these historically uh, low levels. But if they did, uh, the diagonal spread would, would lose value. However, I'd argue that this is unlikely since if IV contracted, then the stock price would almost certainly rise, which would increase the probability. Uh, conversely, if the implied volatility increases, then the profit would increase. So this is the opposite of, of short option strategies like short strangles, where you actually want the IV to contract um, after you, you enter the trade. So that's why for a, a time like this, when we've got sort of a, a low pop, a rapid drop in IV, and you expect it to rise quickly, um, it's a good time for strategies like this, long option strategies like debit spreads and diagonal spreads. Okay, so now we'll make the example more realistic, step by step. Um, I'm still holding IV constant, but I assume that the stock price uh, increases steadily, but not massively. So specifically on April 28th, which is the expiration of the short option, the share price has increased to uh, $55.21, which is still below the short strike. So in this case, the, uh, the profit increases to nearly $1. 
If the stock price increases beyond the strike price of the short option, then the diagonal spread will hit the max profit of $1.49. And if you notice how the, the profit curve is, is uh, leveling off at that uh, max profit level, as the arrow points out. So what if the stock price declines uh, hugely, way below the strike of either the long or short option? Okay, then the value of both options would decline nearly to zero, and we'd be at or close to the max loss uh, of $1.51. However, this is actually unrealistic. If the stock price drops by 12% in a couple of weeks, then uh, IV would, would explode. It would probably triple from these historic lows. Uh, so in this case, the spread is still worth nearly 30 cents when the short option expires. So our loss is reduced by 20%. Um, in most cases, we would have exited this trade long before this point. Um, you know, if, if, if IV explodes, then I'm probably going to ditch the diagonal spread and, and move back to a uh, short premium strategy. Okay, to, so to continue to add more realism to the model, um, I add random perturbations to the uh, stock price to simulate reality. I took a year of historical stock prices and computed the mean and variance of the daily percent changes. So this allows me with a random number generator to realistically simulate um, how the stock price changes from day to day. I also allow the implied volatility to vary, but notice that the, the um, changes in IV are coupled to the change in stock price. So specifically when the stock drops, the IV usually rises and, and vice versa. So in any event, to get a sense of the expected return of a diagonal spread in, in, in reality, I would repeat this process hundreds of thou or thousands of times in sort of a Monte Carlo simulation. So here's the result of, of 20 runs with different uh, stock price and IV scenarios. Uh, many of the scenarios go quickly to max loss, meaning that the stock dropped significantly. Many others go up to max profit, meaning the stock moved up rapidly. And the other cases are, are somewhere in between. <clears throat> but on average, uh, I'm seeing a profit of, of 40 cents over these 20 runs, which is pretty nice. So in summary, what did this uh, <coughs> modeling exercise teach me? I paid $1.51 for the diagonal spread. Um, this is 50.3% the width of the strikes, which was $3. Um, <clears throat> you know, Tasty Trade and some others, Tasty Trade likes to say you need to pay less than 75% of the width of the strikes. So I'm well under that threshold here. <clears throat> so on average, I expect a profit of about uh, 40 cents. So the long diagonal spread is supposed to be a low IV strategy. So what would happen if uh, IV were to double? Um, the, Black, the Black Scholes model says that the spread would now cost $1.94 or 65% the width of the spread. So we're still under 75%, but we've increased it quite a lot. Um, if you assume, probably incorrectly, that the average sale price of the spread is the same as in the low IV case, so 40 cents, um, no, I'm sorry, same as, yeah, then, then our expected profit is actually slightly negative. So anyway, uh, I hope you learned something. I definitely did with this exercise. Um, I know these, these tools are, you know, these are kind of primitive modeling tools relative to what you'll find in a modern platform, but the fact that I made them uh, helps me understand what's going on in the, in the guts. Um, if you want me to model another strategy or add something to this model, let me know. Um, this modeling spreadsheet is not, not quite ready for the prime time, but, uh, you know, someday I may make it public. So anyway, uh, would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, yeah, we'll see you, see you in the next video.